All right, YouTube, hello, thank you for watching. Today I'm taking a rare glimpse into the bottom of my voltage multiplier. I built this in 1991. I've only ever been under this thing one time over all those years. It's like a little time capsule underneath here. So if you watched my last video on the power supply for this, you heard me say that it's awful difficult to power light bulbs and things like that, fans, etc., from a voltage source when it's fluctuating 8 volts. Today I'm building a board to put underneath to clean up some of that voltage fluctuation and keep my light bulbs pretty steady. It's a bit of a beast. It weighs about 35 pounds. It's made out of a 10 inch stainless steel dog dish and a piece of 4 inch schedule 40. It's definitely got some weight to it. There's a big thick toilet bowl flange up here on top. So two wires need to go through the top of the stainless steel dog dish and into here. This has about two and a half gallons of oil in it. So you kind of see that there might be some issues there. How to keep the oil from pouring out the bottom of it with wires going through it. My first model of this in like 90, I think it probably was, failed because of the oil leak. But this one here has held pretty tight for like, what, 30, 34 years now? Can't really get any better light than what I got here. Things that are glossy are really funny. So the pipe's 26 inches long. There's a piece of number 10 solid that comes up along the side of it and bonds underneath to the dog bowl. And then there's a perfect diameter, roughly, I think this was eight inch ring, eight or nine, that goes around the perimeter of it. That was probably the best thing that I ever did for this high voltage generator. I did that probably about three years ago. The ions screaming out of the top of it will charge up everything in your house. And um, it will destroy everything in your house because of the electrostatic field. But when you put a ring around the outside of it, it kind of acts like a containment for it, uh, where the electrostatic field really doesn't travel or migrate to other places outside the ring here. These things here will charge up objects many, many feet away. This is actually a bronze roller bearing. It might have been used on a conveyor. There's two of them. And I soldered them together, smoothed it all off, because you need a smooth surface there. Around here is kind of like some, um, uh, it's what they use to seal up electrical penetrations, like around conduit or something like that. It doesn't conduct electricity at all. It works real well. There is only one single drain plug in this, so putting oil into it is a little bit of a chore. There's no breather for it. The ring here had to be absolutely perfect if you measured from the edge of this over to the inside edge of the ring, the whole way around with a pair of calipers. It's less than ten thousandths of an inch. That's pretty important. And you can kind of see what I got down here, because in the case of here, it's not ten thousandths of an inch. So I had to put some of this putty stuff over the inside edge there to keep the voltage from arcing at this point. So it will arc equally well in all directions the whole way around the perimeter. Now at the bottom you can see the piece of number 10 that comes down and bonds to the dog bowl. So it sets up on ceramic insulators and rubber feet just because it needs airflow going into the bottom for the fan. I just replaced these two lights. I'm going to change some things on those that relate to the new power supply voltage. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I just have to build this little circuit board. And then everything should be good to go with it. The fan is 12 volts at 130 milliamps. And this light bulb here, this was kind of a weird kind of modification here. Kind of show you what I did. The voltage swing on this light bulb had always been really, really high. So the bulb was either very dim or slightly dim, depending upon where you put the voltage at. It was never a high current bulb that was in there. A lot of these are made by dial light. They're super good quality holders, but you're very limited what you can do with these things. They're very expensive. 
And finding bulbs for them is kind of like locating a condor egg. And the currents on them are very low, so they're pretty dim bulbs, regardless if you found another bulb for them or not. And that's kind of sort of what was in there. So what I did was figured out a way to get a different light bulb into there. Now, as you probably noticed, these are plug-in bulbs. Uh, you can't simply cut the bottom of the bulb off to use the pins to push down in and then solder another light bulb to the top of what you cut off, if you kind of follow me. Because this metal appears to have chromium in it, and chromium doesn't solder. So that was a failure. But what I was able to do is find some pins that fit exactly right down into that socket and then kept them out just far enough that I could tack solder another light bulb into it. Although I gotta admit it took me round and round for many hours just to accomplish that. So now I got a bright bulb in there and that bulb needs 60 milliamps but I'm gonna give it 65. Now the other light up here which wasn't in it before is just a red LED. It's like 1800 MCD. It needs 20 milliamps to run that. Somebody had left me a comment about schematics. I like to be pretty thorough in things, showing you ideas for stuff I've done. But you know, on this table that I got here, I mean, there was barely enough space for the radios. And you start doing something even semi-major, and there isn't even room on here to hold a cup of iced tea without spilling it. I'm not sure of the point I'm getting at, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Zener diodes are really kind of a cool thing. If you looked at a Zener diode on a Huntron tracker, you would kind of see something that looks like this on the display. Zeners have what's called a knee to them. Now in the case of this here, I had 280 ohm resistors here in parallel that I'm going to change. So with 30 volts here, the current coming down through those two resistors would have been about 155 milliamps the current would split because of Kirchhoff's current law. If you remember back, if you learned about electronics, you, you probably remember learning about Kirchhoff's current law. Really simple thing that said that the sum of the branch currents, being these two branches here, equal the current coming down through here. So if there's 155 coming down through here, and we want 65 milliamps coming down through here, the rest of the current's got to go somewhere, so it goes down through the Zener diode. The Zener diode will hold this voltage at 16 volts, and then we can further drop that to 12 through this 51 ohm resistor. But this was kind of my point there about the knee on the Zener. When this voltage drops to 22 volts, the current through this resistor is going to drop to around 66 milliamps. You might kind of see a problem with that because this branch current here needs 65, but we only got 66 available. So that only leaves one milliamp for the Zener diode. And that's where the knee comes into play. You can kind of shift these knees to about where you want the circuit to work the best at. So what I did was I changed this 90 ohm here, these two 180s, down to a 75. That's going to put more current down through the Zener, and that's going to shift the knee kind of more towards the on state and allow more current for this light bulb when the voltage drops to 22. So this Zener diode here is going to have to dissipate a pretty good amount of power when this voltage goes up to 30 volts to compensate for it because it's got to hold the voltage off here and it's got to take the excess current that normally would be delivered into this point here down through the light bulb if you follow me. So as we raise the voltage up here, the power dissipation on the Zener goes up. The power dissipation is simply 16 volts times the current that's flowing through it. So I'm going to use two 5-watt Zeners in parallel. Honestly, a 5-watt Zener would have done it, but um, I don't ever want a Zener diode to short out on this circuit. Now over here, which is the red LED that I put in there. All I need is a 270 feeding that 5.1 volt Zener. If there's 20 milliamps flowing down through here that we want, then the current coming down through here has got to be greater than 20 milliamps. And at 16.6 .6 volts, it'll be 42 and a half milliamps. So roughly 22 and a half milliamps of that current is being shunted down through the Zener diode. 
when this voltage hits 16.6. Kind of backing up here, um, I said at some point I wanted this light bulb to run a little bit hot on me for light output. So when I calculated this resistor, I calculated it at 12.6 volts here at this point at a current increase of 5 milliamps up to 65 to make the bulb run a little bit brighter. The bulb I'm using in here is like a 16,000 hour bulb. So I, there's not going to be any issue with that. Light bulbs are kind of a funny thing. If you take the voltage up on them, you're fine. I mean, if you don't trash the light bulb. I mean, of course, if you take the voltage up too high, you're going to burn the light bulb up. But my point is this. Taking the voltage down on a light bulb is a whole different ball of wax. So you don't want voltage to fall short on your light bulbs because uh, they're going to be super dim. Even at currents, that really wouldn't make sense for them to be dim. If I drop this 60 milliamp light bulb down to an operating current of 50 milliamps, you can barely even see the light bulb lit. Another thing too to keep in mind is that when things get hot, they don't conduct electricity as well. The molecules become unstable and they bump around and it impedes the current flow, which is something that you see in a light bulb. Uh, because the resistance when that light bulb doesn't have current going through it is completely different than what the resistance is when that light bulb is lit or the effective resistance of it if you calculated it. Let's just put it that way. Just some things to keep in mind if you want to use old school light bulbs you got to be really fussy about the voltage that you put on them. So all those zener diode anodes there go to ground. This here will go to my white wire which is either plus 22 or 30 depending upon load. The wire that goes on here will go to my 16.6 volt variable line to power the oscillator and this here will go to the LED anode and this 51 ohm right there will go on to that white light bulb in the front there. So there's the four wires for it to go on there then this will come over onto here and then another wire is going to come off of somewhere down here on this red wire and come over onto here and then I think what I'll do is pull this screw out of there this is a ground screw for the fan it really doesn't need to be grounded there it could be tied to this green wire so terminate these two together along with the ground for that and then that will free this hole up here where I can mount this board through that hole and then simply put a tie wrap around the board down there. I need a 16.6 volt adjustable wire going to this 240 there yet and then that should be it. I think this will work out pretty well. That will keep all my light bulbs at pretty much the same intensity. The only one that you will notice you're definitely not going to notice it on the white one that's the 12 volt 65 milliamp bulb but you will notice it on this LED because the voltage here falls to 3 volts which would be enough to power the LED because the forward voltage on the LED is 2.1 volts uh, but we need to keep the zener happy too so putting 3 volts there is going to starve this LED for current because there's a 200 there. Other than that, it's going to be pretty flawless. So I think it's ready to go upright. Well, those rubber feet, they've really taken a pounding. There is a lot of weight down on this dog bowl. I didn't know how that was going to work when I did this. You would think with that much weight on it, the top of that dog bowl would collapse. There's like four or five sixteenths brass bolts that come down through this toilet bowl flange and then they flat washer and nut and lock washer on the bottom of the bowl. It's time to clean up this big mess I've made here. As soon as we get a day when the relative humidity drops down, I will power this up. Hey, thank you for watching. Have a great day.